we're asked to categorize the value of each exponential expression. And we categorize each expression into either the bucket less than negative one, between negative one and zero, and between zero and one. And I encourage you to pause this video and try this out on your own. So I assume you've given a go at it. Now let's work through it together. So I just copy and pasted the exact same exercise right over here. And let's think about each of these expressions. And actually, before doing that, I actually want to draw a number line to think about these categories. So it looks like the important things to consider. You have a 0, you have 1, and then you have negative 1. This first category right over here, less than negative 1, that's all of these values right over there. Then you have the category between negative 1 and 0. That's these values right over there. And then finally, you have the category between 0 and 1. That's this category right over here. So they didn't give us a bucket for greater than 1. So I guess it's safe to assume that none of these are going to be greater than 1. But let's go each expression by each expression. So this first expression, 7 to the negative fourth power. 7 to the negative fourth power. We've already talked about several times that when you raise something to a negative exponent, this isn't somehow negative seven to the fourth power or anything like that. This is this ex when you see an exponent, when you see a negative number in exponent, you should immediately think reciprocal. So this is going to be equal to one over seven to the positive fourth power. And you don't even have to know what seven to the fourth actually is. It's two thousand four hundred one, and if you're interested, but you don't even have to know that. You just know that this right over here is going to be a large positive number. So one over that is going to be a very small positive number. It's going to be between zero and one. This is actually one two thousand four hundred and one. But you don't even have to know that. This is a large number. And so you say, well, this is going to get pretty close. It's, going, it's positive, so it's going to be above 0. But it's not going to be too much above 0. It's going to sit on the number line. Actually, I'm not even doing justice right over there. The way I've drew it at scale, it's you know, not even a pixel to the right of 0 right over there. So this is going to be between, between 0 and 1. Now, and actually, I'll draw lines like this to show where it roughly on our number line where it would sit. Now let's think about negative seven to the third power. So negative seven to the third power. Well, this is the same thing as negative seven times negative seven times negative seven. And you could also think about this as negative one times seven times negative one times seven times negative one times seven, which is the same thing as you have three negative ones being multiplied together. So negative one to the third power times seven to the third power. Well, what's negative one to the third power? Well, it's negative one times negative one, which would be positive one, but then times another negative one. So this is negative one right over here. So this is going to be equal to negative, and let me write it this way. You could write it either as negative, I could write it like this, negative seven to the third power. So seven to the third, once again, we don't even have to know what it is. This is going to be a large positive value, but then we're negating it. If we had seven to the third, it would be greater than one, but negative seven to the third is definitely less than negative one. So this fits into that bucket right over there. Now we have negative seven to the negative fourth. Negative seven to the negative fourth. So let me write it over here. So negative seven to the negative fourth. And this could be a little daunting because you have a negative base raised to a negative exponent. But whenever we see, whenever I see a negative exponent, the first thing I worry about, or the first thing my brain wants to do is take a reciprocal. So this is going to be one over negative seven, one over negative seven to the fourth power. And once again, the same ideas we just saw over here, we could view this as one over negative one to the fourth power times seven to the fourth power, which is going to be equal to negative one to the fourth power. This is just going to be equal to one. So this is going to be equal to one over seven to the fourth power. Well, we've already thought about what one over seven to the fourth power is. It is between, it is between zero and one. So this right over here is between, is between zero and one. Another way you could think about it, this is going to be, one over negative seven times negative seven times negative seven times negative seven. You have a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. Well, that's going to be a positive. So it's positive seven to the fourth power. Now let's think about this one right over here. Negative seven to the negative fifth power. 
So let me write this out. Negative 7 to the negative fifth power. Well, once again, as soon as you see that negative exponent, I, I want to just take the reciprocal so I don't have a negative exponent anymore. So it's 1 over negative 7 to the fifth power. And we could rewrite this as 1 over negative 1 to the fifth times negative 7, or sorry, times 7 to the fifth, times 7 to the fifth, which is equal to, well, what's negative, what's a negative 1 to the fifth power? Well, a negative 1 raised to an odd power is going to be a negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 over 7 to the fifth power. So where is 1 over 7 to the fifth power? Well, that would be really close to 0. This would be positive. 1 over 7 to the fifth would be a very small positive number. But now we're taking the negative of that. So we're going to jump onto the other side of 0. So this is going to be between negative 1 and 0. Between negative 1 and 0. And then finally, negative 7 to the fifth power. Well, that's just going to be this. Once again, you could view that as negative 1 times 7 to the fifth power, which is the same thing as negative 1 to the fifth times 7 to the fifth, which is the same thing as negative 7 to the fifth. 7 to the fifth is a very large number, larger than 1. So the negative of that is going to be a very negative number. It's going to be less than negative 1. So this is going to be less than negative 1 right over here. So now let's take our results. And since I have a bad memory, I'm essentially probably going to have to think through it again. And let's actually put them in the buckets. 7 to the negative fourth power. This is not going to be a negative value. This is 1 over 7 to the fourth. This is going to be between 0 and 1. Negative 7 to the third power. That's essentially, if you take 7 to the third power, you get a very large positive number. But then, it, since it's, you're gonna, that's going to be times negative 1 to the third power, it's going to be the negative version of that. So that's going to be less than negative 1. Negative 7 to the negative fourth. Well, we already determined, especially because this, is an, this ends up being 1 over negative 7 to the fourth power, and that's an even exponent. It ends up being the same as 7 to the negative fourth. And then you had negative 7 to the negative fifth power. So once again, that was going to be 1 over negative 7 to the fifth power. And so we found that to be between negative 1 and 0. And then finally, this right over here is going to be, it's going to be negative, and it's going to be a very negative number. It's less than negative 1. And so those are our choices, and we can check our answer, and we got it right.